Okay. Yeah, I, I want to thank everybody for joining. Um, I'm the one that you know sent out the invites. I met Rob a few months ago, um, actually almost eight months ago, and I was quite um, flabbergasted by the, his, his approach because I'm in the electrical control and motor business, and um, there's been a lot of information that you know about efficiencies and the ability to meet those efficiencies from the power company and various people. So. Rob and I got to collaborating back and forth. And then I said, well, why don't you let me introduce you to some of the you know, various connections I've got. So that's kind of how this rolled out. But anyway, I'll, I'll let Rob, Rob go. He's been doing this a while. So I think he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, thanks Roger. Uh, I'll get straight into the <clears throat> presentation. Hi, thank you, uh, Roger. Um, my name is uh, Rob Welke. Uh, I've been in the <clears throat> uh, water pumping and, and hydraulics industry for 53 years. Uh, 50 of those years uh, as a paraprofessional me mechanical engineer. Uh, it is, um, I've still got people coming in. Um, it's been an, an absolutely amazing experience and uh, I think I'll go straight into the into the presentation because it's kind of structured in such a way that uh, it uh, does get across where I've come through and and uh, and why I've done what I've done. What is a masterclass? You know, it's called a pumping system masterclass. Well, a masterclass by definition is a class given to students of a particular discipline. Uh, in this case, it's water pumping system energy efficiency and uh, by an expert of that discipline. And I regard myself in that category, having spent 53 years in it. And the whole of the time, I have never sold product. So uh, I have an unbiased view. Uh, I have no interest in individual product whatsoever. My interest is how do they perform and how much do they cost to run? That's my interest. Um, but just having said that, um, my credentials include a diploma in mechanical engineering. Uh, I'm a certif certified irrigation agronomist and uh, certified irrigation auditor. Uh, I have a certificate for and training assessment. I'm HACCP certified for recycled water and, uh, and I live in Adelaide, South Australia. Uh, <clears throat> I started with uh, my time with a major water supply company. Uh, it'd be in the category of a municipality, except this was a state government department. At the time, there were 6,000 employees when I joined. Uh, for a total population of 1.2 million, uh, it's a fairly heavy uh, a part of the sector. Uh, I become attached to the pumping engineer uh, very early in my career and I got to go out and site commission test and also works test uh, some of the largest pumps uh, that you might ever ever see in the water supply industry uh, up to uh, up to uh, seven and a half thousand horsepower in size um, and I also got involved a lot with pipeline uh, efficiency. So when we talk about pump efficiency, everybody knows what pump efficiency is. You know, you know a pump might be 80% efficient and if it wears slightly, that might drop down to 75. But pipeline efficiency, how do you quantify that? Well, essentially, uh, as pipelines age, uh, they increase in friction. And that's a major part of the teaching of this course is what, <clears throat> what's the process and what's the, what's the effect the effect is something that uh, really has a catastrophic effect on energy efficiency sometimes. Um, so, so I grew up in, in an environment where we were incredibly, this is in the 70s, we're incredibly conscious of the cost of electricity back then because South Australia is the driest state of the driest continent in the world. So it was heavily reliant on, uh, on water and in dry years, 90% of the state's water consumption was pumped from the River Murray. So the infrastructure there is something like 27,000 kilometers or nearly 17,000 miles of water mains just in our small state. Um, 
So that's my background, energy efficiency in, the, in pumping. And it's not just the pump, it's the efficiency of the pipeline system. And uh, I was really fortunate, I think, to have rubbed shoulders with uh, lots of uh, mechanical, electrical and hydraulic engineers. And, uh, and, I, and I was kind of like a, a soak, really, like a, like a sponge. I took, just absorbed as much as I could go uh, as, as, I went, as I went along. After 25 years, I got out of that, threw myself uh, to the private sector. And what a shock that was. Uh, I, I chose to work in the irrigation industry and, and, uh, and brought all of my skills along with me to apply to the irrigation industry. Well, I found that nobody was really practicing energy efficiency in the irrigation system. It, it, it was kind of uh, um, spoken about, but never practiced. Everybody's talking about water efficiency and, 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 and that's just it, uh, equally as important. Uh, but over the time, I got to do audits uh, on every imaginable type of irrigation system. Uh, and part of the audits uh, was really observing what the pumping system was doing. And, uh, and, and one of the common themes that I found uh, was that the, the majority of the deficiencies in irrigation systems was due to the deficiency in the pumping system. But this wasn't being addressed. It wasn't being taught. Uh, wasn't spoken about. Nobody knew what to do. So, <clears throat> uh, so that was th that. Then became later on the uh, the reason why I wrote this training course. It's it's very specifically about energy efficiency of the whole pumping system. I want to play you this? Selecting the most energy efficient pump is only the first step in maximising pumping system efficiency. But all pumps these days are very efficient. So what's the difference between pump efficiency and pumping system efficiency? The answer lies in the hydraulic efficiency of the whole pumping system. When designing for improved irrigation energy efficiency, especially for future farm upgrades, improving hydraulic efficiency alone could yield more than half of the total potential energy savings in an irrigation pumping system. Selecting the most energy efficient... There you go. So I'll show you a bit more graphically what that means. <clears throat> if we've got an irrigation system and, and that's just a, 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 pic, you know, a, a sort of a picturized version of it, got a few components. Um, most people would go out and do a pump test to measure the efficiency, the energy efficiency of an irrigation system. Uh, and we'd go back and compare with a manufacturer's curve. And that in itself has got lots of traps because the pump when brand new, uh, could be anywhere between plus and minus 9% of its, of its flow. And, then, and we cover that in some detail in the course. Um, but what does that mean as far as the, the energy efficiency of the whole system? Well, it really only represents a small part. You really want to get down in tin tacks and work out the energy efficiency of the whole system. You've got to take into account every single component. And we're talking about actually doing pressure measurements across components. And some, one of the most critical ones is the pipeline system. Um, but every single component uh, has a, an, an, an energy cost. And uh, we, we do it in the, in the course, we look at that in terms of life cycle cost. You know, so hydraulic valves, for example, some of these can have monumental life cycle costs. Uh, and that's just in energy. Um, the irrigation design itself, we don't, uh, you know, we don't consider in this course, except that the 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 pipeline system and its and its um, uh, friction losses uh, is is of major consideration. What we do in this case is is uh, go out and and measure all these components and then compare with best practice. What is best practice? Can anyone define what is best practice? Unfortunately, best practice by default has become the standards which we are sold with product. And so it's tended to become uh, really a default of, this, of, 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 the, of the product salespeople. And that may be definitely you know, a conflict of interest. So we need to evaluate what is best practice if we're looking at energy efficiency. 
can uh, could could you please mute um, mm -hmm. your microphones in the background, guys? I'm getting some uh, uh, noises coming through. Uh, so be best practice uh, is best practice for what? In this case, we're looking at best practice for energy efficiency. And having done that, we might also have to go back and say, well, yeah, okay, that's best practice for energy efficiency, but there might be some other considerations uh, like irrigation efficiency, and hopefully the two will, will be compatible. The course uh, has four modules. The first one is energy, and we look uh, quite uh, in detail about what's involved in energy for irrigation uh, in the United States. 65% uh, of irrigation systems are powered with electricity, 25% by diesel, and the remainder with gas and LP. And we look at how to calculate energy for all of those with the uh, uh, purpose-built software. Um, pipelines, we look at the optimization process, but <clears throat> look, the optimization process has been around a while. What we look at is very specifically uh, what's involved for irrigation. Uh, and there's some peculiar peculiarities with the uh, irrigation systems. Um, and what you'll learn there will be equally uh, applicable to some industrial situations. Uh, we, look, we then look at pump selection, uh, but we look at pump selection from the point of view of overall system energy efficiency. Uh, and, and, and the software that we present is, is quite specifically very uh, fit for purpose design for that. And last uh, it is pump testing. Uh, it, it, it might seem pretty easy to just go out to site with a couple of test gauges and do a pump test. Um, but how do you interpret the results? I can tell you it's the most difficult thing in the world. And I've done around about 1,500 pump tests in my career. And every time I go to site, there's a curved ball somewhere. Uh, sometimes you go to a pump test and you come back with more questions than answers. Um, so it's not all beer and Skittles. So we go through every component required uh, in the pump testing and we go back and compare it with uh, the, uh, the HI 14.6 uh, standard uh, for, for really works testing. And, uh, and compare the difference, what you get on site versus, um, versus what the pump testing standard says. They're worlds apart, I can tell you, worlds apart. Now you might say, you might look at this and say, well, yeah, I've been to a training course, they've got all those. Well, I can tell you what, what you'll get in this course will be totally different from what you've got in any other course. It, it, it's, you know, I just know from feedback from the guys who've been to the course um, that uh, it's different. It's outside the box. <clears throat> One of the things we do is, um, is we create a model of irrigation. The reason we do this is so that people attending the course can get a bit of a feel for the size of an irrigation or the size of a pumping system um, that we are talking about. So we, we, we use a model of 200 acre feet per annum and it could be from golf course or center pivot or uh, or, or drip irrigation of any type. And, and they sort of outline the typical sizes of irrigation systems. So we come up with potential savings uh, based on that model. And uh, if you've got uh, an irrigation system or a pumping system that has five times that size, the savings will be five times that or the cost to your uh, energy um, efficiency cost. Uh, will be five times that. This is um, one of the most uh, valid pieces of software that come with part of the course. It's a pumping energy calculator. And uh, it, 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 it takes, uh, excuse, excuse me guys, I've got somebody in the background. Could you mute your microphone, please? No. We were wondering if, yeah, I was asking if he was watching the story. Guys, could we mute your microphone, please? Not, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure who it is. Mute. I think it's Joe. Okay, got rid of uh, that. Um, so we go, we go through the standard uh, uh, formula for calculating pump costs, and uh, you know th this this has really been uh, a, 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 a US units conversion from metric 
um, and uh, it's very compatible with what you use in the United States. In fact, uh, I've got a, a book here. If you look at my uh, screen, it's uh, it's put out by the United States Department of Agriculture, Natural Resources uh, um, um, Conservation Service, um, and it's uh, it's all compatible. It's all talking about the same stuff. So we come up with uh, annual energy costs. We've we've got uh, variables that we can put in. We can put in uh, acre feet or or uh, or any other unit. Uh, from an annual electricity cost, we it automatically cal calculates kilowatts per acre feet. So the kilowatt hours, sorry, the kilowatt hours per acre feet becomes the new measurement for energy efficiency. Forget about pump efficiency. It doesn't tell you anything about the energy efficiency of an irrigation system. Kilowatt hours per acre feet does or kilowatt hours per million gallons or whatever unit you want uh, it, it is what the energy uh, factor that you need to measure by. Then uh, then using uh, uh, an electricity um, uh, uh, multiplier, you know, due, due to the uh, price differences or price rises uh, uh, in electricity and also CPI, we amortize those annual costs over a number of years. And depending on what number of years you prefer to amortize, you know, that particular pump station there, it's 14,600 per annum. That's worth $316,000 over 25 years. And so we use that uh, to advantage to compare different systems against one against each other. Another area is, uh, is the emissions. Um, and uh, this calculates uh, the total tons of CO2 per annum. Um, you know, you, whether you uh, agree with the uh, climate change initiatives or not, you may be, well be forced into looking at these much more in the future. Uh, this particular software also comes uh, for the diesel engine. So you can calculate the energy costs, energy running costs of a diesel engine. And uh, it, it's nothing to do with how many gallons an hour a diesel engine uh, runs at. That's irrelevant. Uh, it's how much kilowatt hours that that, uh, that, that engine uh, is, is developing. Uh, and um, so this is a formula that I haven't seen re reproduced anywhere. It's, it's not even in the Department of Agriculture book. Okay, so it's, this is quite new and uh, it's absolutely relevant. Um, and, and, and similarly, we calculate uh, the amortized cost of, of diesel over a number of years and also the emissions, uh, the annual emissions in CO2 from diesel engines. Uh, on both of these spreadsheets, there are some uh, useful area calculations where we can quantify the number of acre feet, et cetera. One of the most uh, fascinating apps uh, that you'll get is called IPEAT. It's called Irrigation Pumping Energy Efficiency Assessment Tool. And uh, this is my little flagship uh, uh, app. It's, uh, it's, it's on the cloud. You can pull it up on your phone and you can make assessments of the total energy efficiency of a pumping system. And it's okay, it's geared um, mostly towards uh, the irrigation system, but there are parts of it that can be used for industrial. Uh, I'll give a demonstration of that after the, the end of the session. At the moment, I'm just uh, taking you through, giving you an overview of, of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the software that, that we are going to present. I'm going to run this. This is about, this is, this is a bit old, this video, uh, it's, but it gets the message across. If you own an irrigation farm which relies on pumping water for your crops, You'll only know too well that poor pumping energy efficiencies means higher power bills. So how do we go about measuring our pumping energy efficiency? This normally involves taking a number of site measurements, including flow, pressure, power, friction losses and elevations, all of which could take a couple of days and be quite costly. Well, what if the auditors find that your system is okay? then you've wasted your money trying to save money. 
So how do you assess whether it's worth bringing out the experts to do a pumping energy efficiency audit? Simple. You, the grower, can do a simple energy efficiency screening test first using Talamenko's mobile phone app called iPEAT, which stands for Irrigation Pumping Energy Efficiency Assessment Tool. iPEAT considers both pump efficiency and hydraulic efficiency and is based upon common types of irrigation which are represented by six unique hydraulic models. By selecting your irrigation type and inputting data from your farm records plus some on-site measurements, iPEAT calculates your overall pumping energy efficiency and reads out potential dollar savings. From this you can determine if it's worth bringing in the experts to conduct a more detailed audit and then be assured that you will get a return from this investment. So, now there's no excuse for waiting around to assess your irrigation system's pumping energy efficiency. I Pete, helping growers to help themselves. So there you go, that's iPeat, um, fascinating uh, little app. Um, it's, uh, it's mate is called IPEC, which is Irrigation Pumping Efficiency Calculator. See, iPeat calculates the overall energy efficiency, which includes pump efficiency and hydraulic efficiency. Now, how do, how do we calculate hydraulic efficiency? Well, essentially, we look at how much does it cost you to pump water through an irrigation system or, or a water delivery system versus how much it would cost if you optimised that system. And if the difference in, uh, in head was 20%, then essentially that the, you're looking at, a, at an energy efficiency of only 80%. So that's essentially how it works. So uh, IPEAT calculates a, a pump plus a hydraulic efficiency, and uh, this one uh, calculates only the pump efficiency and usually using most of the data that you can get uh, off your farm um, to calculate the pump efficiency. And then you subtract one from the other and you got the hydraulic efficiency. We move on to pipelines and uh, we have a fascinating look at, at the hydraulics of irrigation pipe systems. Uh, the, there's a unique set of circumstances in irrigation where we have uh, potential deposits on the inside of pipe caused by biofilm or glacial flour or silt or loss of zinc, iron hydroxide, salt precipitation, you name it. Um, and and uh, we look at uh, at, at the equations that are commonly used to calculate friction. One of them is Hazen and Williams, probably uh, most would be familiar with that. Uh, and the other one we look at is uh, Darcy Weisbach. And Darcy Weisbach, and there's a number of others like it, uh, relate efficiency to the roughness of the bore of a pipeline. So what we do is correlate those two. And, um, and just an interesting outcome, five thousandths of an inch, five thou of an inch bore roughness inside an eight inch pipe reduces the Hazen and Williams C value from 154 to 134. Now that's a 13% flow capacity reduction. That's from five thousandths of an inch bore roughness. And if you, if you want to maintain the same flow rate, that's going to cost you 30% more in energy cost. But these are real figures, okay? Uh, we look at how and why and what to do about it. And when we look at hydraulic op optimization, we look at the effects of increasing pipe diameters, uh, which comes with increasing pipe costs. And that in turn reduces pipe friction uh, which in turn reduces the pumping costs. So where's the sweet spot? How do we know what's the optimum pipe diameter? Well, we've got an app called Hydrops, uh, which is, stands for hydraulic optimization. And uh, uh, this is also uh, on the web. So you can load this into your cell phone and pull it up uh, anywhere in the field, anywhere that you can get reception. Uh, once again, I'll give a bit of a demonstration, but essentially by inputting all these, these data here on, in the yellow cells, we'll get a readout of the optimum uh, diameter 
in inches of uh, the pipe over uh, three different ages. There's 10 year, 15 year and 25 year. An incredibly uh, valuable uh, product. There's another uh, app um, and uh, this, this is one I wrote um, after years and years in the field and wishing I would have had an instant access to a calculator to calculate simple things like if I've got the velocity of, you know, five feet per second and I've got a pipe diameter of 7.8 inches, what's the flow rate? And, and you, you know, you, you can't calculate that in your head in the field. So I devised this app and it's got 11 different calculators all in one. Uh, and it's the most handy little tool. Um, uh, so, some people have got this up on their uh, desktop screen all the time. Uh, we, we can have a look at that. This is also every item on there is interchangeable with metric and US units. So you can interchange between the two if you wish. Then we look at pigging. Pigging is a, is a, a method used to clean yeah, yeah, pipelines yeah, yeah. using right. a foam pig. So we're about to, to uh, pig or clean a, a, an 18 inch diameter pipeline that's about six miles long and uh, this, was, this was a very basic method of uh, preparing a pig for, for uh, insertion into the pipe and we use a, a standard uh, you know, domestic vacuum cleaner and we literally suck the air out of the bag to uh, reduce the diameter of the pig. And the reason for this is that the pigs were used for for um, for pigging in these pipelines are an interference fit. So we actually need to reduce their diameter to fit them into the pipeline. Here's, a, here's another example of um, of a pigging exercise. This is the water coming out of the other end. And uh, it's two pigs, three pigs. So we put three pigs through that pipeline. That was a six inch pipeline. I did it. I did an audit on that pumping system uh, before this and I found the, the, the pipeline system had a C value of 80. Now that's, you know, a brand new pipe is a C value of 150. So 80 is almost only half of the uh, of the pumping capacity, uh, and uh, it, it had taken 16 years to get to that point. But the water was crystal clear as it came out, so we decided to pig and find out what was in it, and that shocked everyone, including the dogs in the background, as you could hear. They were just really upset. Um, unfortunately, the pigging didn't make much difference to the pipeline because uh, whatever was in it was in it for so long it had hardened. Okay, so we, we look at a whole lift, lot of scenarios uh, for you to, you know, come up with um, um, correlating what you might have on site. Galvanized steel, you know, one of the most uh, popular um, materials used in, uh, in pipe work is galvanized steel. Uh, you know, every center pivot out there almost has got galvanized steel. Uh, what, what really amazes me is, uh, is, is I see um, in, in industry, uh, fire systems are all galvanized steel. And what's worse, they just sit there for years on end with hardly any turnover and, and all the oxygen depletes. I can just imagine what's inside of those pipelines after a couple of years. Uh, but center pivots, we keep the water turning over. Uh, that keeps oxidizing the, uh, the uh, zinc coating, which is good. Uh, but ultimately, um, you know, the zinc coating uh, dissolves and we finish up with a mild form of corrosion. Now that you only need a, a surface corrosion equivalent to 150 grade sandpaper to give you a C value of 100. What does that mean? What does that represent? Well, if you start from say C, C value of 130 from a new center pivot, going down to, going down to C value of 100 is like a 33% flow reduction or if we actually wanted to maintain the same flow, which we do in all irrigation systems, it's gonna cost you 70% increase in energy. Okay, now you don't have that sort of potential. You don't have that sort of power in your pumping system. It was never factored in from the beginning. So 
you know, you pretty quickly uh, get outside of the operating limits of, of uh, irrigation equipment through due to corrosion and, uh, and increase in, in pipe friction. When we, uh, when we look at pump systems, this is what we're taught. You know, you, you come up with a system curve, uh, you, you work out what the average lift is, then you draw your system curve in there, you know what your irrigation flow rate is and uh, you're required, and then you select a pump uh, that intersects those two points, okay? That's what we are taught. This is what is reality. This, this, is, this is exactly what happens in the field. So instead of having a mean duty, you have an upper limit and a lower limit of, of uh, operation due to uh, various uh, static lifts and uh, conditions of pipeline. And superimposed on top of that, you have this um, uh, quite considerable variation in pump duty due to the fact that pumps are not uh, uh, they just don't perform necessarily to the curve that the manufacturer tells you. Why? Because they have they have this 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 guaranteed uh, performance window of plus or minus nine percent of flow. So you can't even guarantee your pump's going to be performing uh, to to what you ask for. And we look at that, and we look at the implications of that, and how to get around that. And uh, some pretty interesting stuff there. And that, that culminates uh, here in this, uh, this pump selection uh, software, uh, which I've created over the years and modified and improved. And uh, it, it has three system curves, uh, which you can see on uh, here in different colors. Uh, it has a uh, facility to add any particular pump uh, curve coordinates that you want. It has the facility to change the speed of the pump, the impeller diameter of the pump, or the hertz of the pump. Uh, it's got power measurements down here. And uh, so if, if you change the impeller diameter or the speed with a VFD, then it will, uh, it, it will show exactly what your power requirements are. Uh, a tremendously helpful tool, that one. And last of all, uh, pump testing. And we go into look at some detail uh, of the requirements of HI 14.6. Uh, and we look at uh, review some pump testing formula and then we get down to nitty gritty and, and, and look at what's required for measuring head and, and flow. Now, now flow, I've, I've always said that um, conducting a pump test, uh, the accuracy of a pump test is 90% uh, dependent on your flow meter and some flow meters, I tell you what, don't cut it. You know, if you come into if you if you come into a pump station with a particular type of flow meter, which I'll detail in the course, forget about even doing a pump test. You know, you'll be wasting your time because they're just historically not reliable. Um, measuring power, there's different methods of measuring power, and uh, they all have their ups and downsides. Um, and we finish off with uh, with a, uh, a a piece of software that's a pump test. Um, um, a template which can enable you to uh, to record your pump test. The interesting thing about this is every pump test uh, is is uh, recorded against the speed of the pump, either an RPM if you if you have an RPM uh, counter, or you can put in uh, the Hertz readout uh, on your VFD. So with this particular uh, software, if you go to site and uh, and you think, oh, damn, there's a VFD on it. And it's only running at like 55 hertz. Uh, well, there's no problem because you can relate the 55 hertz performance back to your 60 hertz performance. Uh, this does it automatically. So there's no need to actually record, you, you know, to disengage a VFD when you do a pump test. You can do it with the VFD running. And, and, and that was one of the major reasons for doing this uh, template because I so often ran into site in the last uh, you know 20 years with VFDs I thought oh, pain in the backside uh, so we got around it how will this course help you okay first firstly it's it's empowering the software empowers you to go to site to to quantify your energy savings in almost any type of irrigation system. For designers, it's to design energy efficient uh, 
uh, pumping systems, not just select the most energy efficient pump. That's last century. Everybody does that anyway. It, it's of no real value when it comes to designing an energy efficient pumping system. Uh, because, because these little blighters, they're all the same. They're all, they're all 80% efficient these days. It's, it's the real, the real uh, uh, objective is to get the, uh, the uh, irrigation system, the, the, the pipeline system into an optimized uh, energy uh, efficiency. Now for auditors, the, th this course and its software would be an essential companion for equip audits. That's the environmental quality incentives program uh, put, uh, uh, done through the NRCS. Um, for farm managers, if you're a farm manager and you want to evaluate your farm energy efficiency, great. This has got the stuff for you so you can actually quantify it. If you don't feel, uh, you know, like you're equipped to go and find out why it's down, then you can then employ somebody. But at least you can, you can use this, uh, this information to determine whether you're, you know, in the right paddock. For salespeople, know what you're selling and the implications of what you're selling. Um, you know, there's so much stuff out there that's got high energy requirements. And, you know, I, I think it's a duty of care to know what you're selling that's having the effect on, on your client. In the end, you potentially save thousands of dollars of annual pumping costs. Uh, you build on your existing uh, qualifications. For example, um, one of the very first time I run this course, uh, there was a CID. Now, CID is a certified irrigation designer. Uh, you know, they're run by Irrigation Association and in Australia, the Irrigation Association of Australia. Um, the guy said at the end of the course, he said, Rob, every CID should do this course. Uh, great for irrigation systems, uh, but, you know, you need more. And, and it's a great idea to justify your position, your position with your client. It's called duty of care. Here's some, some feedback. It's from a civil engineer. It got me thinking about pumps and pumping systems in ways I've never thought before. Okay, here's, here's a, a 35, year, 35 year experience guy. By far the most comprehensive informative course I've sat through. I recommend it. Challenge yourself. You may learn something. A senior irrigation designer in Adelaide at the end of the course said, this training course has no equal. He's right, it doesn't. There's nothing like it out there. A PGG consultant in New Zealand. Look, the poor guy, he, he, uh, bef at the beginning of the course, he fronted up and he started sniggering at me and he said, oh, I suppose you, I suppose you think you're the expert, you know. Oh, I suppose you do this and I suppose you do that. And uh, he sat down, went through the two day, because that was a two day course. And uh, in the end, he, he, he humbled himself. He came back and he said, Rob, this course was excellent. It's just raised the bar for New Zealand irrigation pump design. And it, and it almost brought me to tears and it almost still does today. Uh, how it changes people's lives. This course is amazing. The software Rob has written will hugely benefit our operations. That was from the farm manager of uh, Australia's largest winery, the, uh, the Casella Wines. Um, here's a guy from uh, central Queensland. Rob, Rob's course is very unique. There's nothing out there like it. That's why I'll keep coming back for a refresher. Paul McGavin, he's got a quite a team. He brought three of his staff with him. He's been to the course three times, the same course three times. Um, this is a guy from uh, Victoria. He's got a team of 20 people. He, he's a centre pivot uh, designer and installer. He said, this course has changed the way I look at every irrigation system I design or go to to site. Mate, thanks for a great course. And, uh, and lastly, the senior irrigation designer of Costa Group. Now Costa Group one, runs some of the largest irrigation, uh, berry irrigation uh, uh, farms in Australia. They have a lot of overseas farms. The senior designer leant back on his chair at the end and said, well, I, I feel a bit blown away. And uh, he almost overbalanced uh, back on his chair. So you know, some of these things, um, this is the feedback I get. I mean, I just deliver. This is what people are thinking. I'm thinking, well, that's great. I'm, I'm glad that I'm helping people. 
So here's a summary of, uh, of, of the software that we've got. Uh, IPET, the irrigation uh, pump efficiency calculator. Uh, IPET, the, um, the, the pumping efficiency assessment tool. Uh, the pipe suite and uh, the high drops. Now all of those four uh, are on the cloud and you can just zoom in. The course will give you a QR code. You just click on the QR code and download the link into your phone. You also get these other three, which are straight uh, spreadsheets uh, and, and you are delivered those spreadsheets um, in total. So how, how effective has it been? Well, this is, this is my track record, okay? So I'm not gonna teach anything that I can't do myself or I can't prove that you can do it too, okay? So these are, these are six case studies uh, taken over the last 10 years. Uh, I've done more than that, but you know, these are, these are particularly interesting ones where, where I've divided, in every case, I've divided the audit into pump efficiency and hydraulic efficiency. And in five out of these six, the hydraulic efficiency savings were greater than the pump efficiency savings. And if it wasn't for this one in the middle, which was a particularly high value one where the, uh, there was only the pump because it was a flood pump, so there was no essential pipe work to, to be concerned with. Um, the hydraulic savings from site audits was about three times the value of the pump efficiency savings. That's the order of magnitude that's out there. Why is it out there? I think essentially because, you know, the way we sell product uh, is in a tendering process where we strive for the cheapest price to get the sale. That impacts hugely on the operating costs of an irrigation system. So we need to, you know, have means. This is the means uh, of, um, of looking at it, evaluating it and uh, mitigating it. The presentation uh, is uh, four sessions. Each session is two and a half hours and it commences at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, the cost of the course is uh, 550 US dollars until Tuesday next week. Then it will go up to $650. Um, What will you get for your money? Okay, you get uh, an international uh, expert in pumping systems. Uh, I've, I've teaching uh, in multiple countries. Uh, you get an independent consultant. So the consultant has no bias. I've never sold product. So uh, you get exactly what you need when it comes to saving energy. Uh, 53 years in water pumping and hydraulics, you get 10 hours of class time, you get seven software packages, uh, conservatively worth $700. The most important thing is you, you get empowerment. This course will change you. There's no question about that. You get an unconditional guarantee. We guarantee uh, if after the end of the first session you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. Guaranteed. How do you join? You go to that website there uh, to register. I'll pull it up in a moment. Include your email address and name. You need to load Zoom onto your computer and we'll send you a Zoom invitation 24 hours before the class commences. Classic of mine, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always be what you've always been. You know, I grew up on a farm and I saw lots of farmers around. They, they, lots of them were like that. They always did what their father did, what their father did before them. Uh, and and I, I grew up, my father was different. He challenged everything. And I grew up with this challenge. And, you know, we can be better. We can do things better. And this course enables you to do things better. No question. So there, if you've got a, a cell phone, you can click on that QR code. That'll bring up uh, the registration page. Um, uh, otherwise there's the web link down here and I'm going to click this and I'll open it. Um, so that's, uh, that's what it'll bring you to and, uh, to, to register, you just click on the buy now button and that, that'll bring up, uh, a PayPal, uh, payment. So you just log into your PayPal. If you don't have PayPal, um, we can uh, organize, uh, an invoice, uh, for you to pay.
Uh, Roger. Uh, Roger is uh, the man on the ground in the United States. Uh, he's he's uh, passionate about uh, teaching as well. Uh, I'll hand back to Roger in a moment. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Are there any questions? Can I make an input here? Absolutely, Jim. Welcome. Thank you for coming. So, so Bob, Robert and I go back two years. We briefly talked uh, two years ago at the IA. And then uh, last year, uh, we won an award for the top innovative product of the year. But Robert and I had something in common, and that is we both always have been passionate about energy use. And I have been over the 35, 40 years, I've developed markets in, in mechanized irrigation and I can tell you as a practice, typically we would design a system and often we wouldn't uh, um, do anything more than say, hey, we need to get a pump, you know, and either the dealer or the farmer would get a pump for the head and the, and the, and the you know, flow that we asked for. After taking this, well, more than taking this course, Robert and I worked a lot on some of these spreadsheets, but I'm gonna tell you the three spreadsheets that he quickly talked about, that they're probably the most invaluable tools you have if you wanna sell on ROI and, uh, and OPEC, because that's probably the most important part. And so I had designed some, some spreadsheets, not near to the extent that he has, to, to actually look at the whole economic value of pump A versus pump B. And um, and then his course on the pipeline is worth the about money that he charged because nobody's ever really, that I know of, looked at the, the two ways to look at friction loss. And, and and I even had my buddy who was my mentor sit in on, on that class and uh, he got really excited. So I, I can tell you this is worth more than the money and uh, whether you're a designer or you're on the selling or you do both, this will be invaluable. And uh, um, you, can, you can contact me or whatever, I'm on LinkedIn, but uh, I, I can tell you it's well worth your time. Thank you, Jim. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, they're so uh, humbling comments, thank you. Not, not only that, but I have no dog in this fight. I make no money off this. I'm doing this because I'm passionate about education, and I believe the industry is vastly undereducated when it comes to the pumping, the, the irrigation, and in fact, the products that I have were to address some of those issues because the industry is stagnant in, in those areas. Anyway, I just, this is unpaid promotion. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you. <laughs>